Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. I am in Luminar, well, I'm in Luminar Flex and I'm in Luminar 3, so let me explain. Um, I am talking in this deep dive video about brush masking. Um, I get questions about masking now and then, and I thought it would be um, helpful to dive into it. So let's just do that right now. I'm in Flex because I have my trusty gray piece of paper here which I love to use when I'm doing these little uh, things. Uh, and then I've got a photo in Luminar 3 that I'll show you how to use masking on. So um, what I have is a gray piece of paper and I have an exposure filter, okay? So I get the question sometimes, what is masking? And I gotta admit, uh, before I really got into post-processing and kind of digging into this stuff, I was sometimes kind of scratching my head and I'm like, what? What are we doing? Um, so as the name implies, you mask something, which means you kind of hide it. So masking can be used in one of two ways, basically, with a brush, that is. You can either paint something in or you can erase it, uh, which would be painting it out, if you will. Um, and so that's really what you're doing with masking. And, and again, I'm only going into brush masking here. There's multiple kinds of masking, um, including luminosity masking, but that's a whole other topic. But um, in this video, we're gonna jump into brush masking. So I've got the exposure filter and I've got a gray piece of paper. So as you can imagine, when I drag the exposure filter to the right, the whole gray sheet of paper gets really bright because I'm increasing the exposure. So what masking does is it allows you to control where the adjustments go in your photo. So instead of just increasing the exposure across the entire photo, you can use a brush mask to selectively apply it to only certain parts of the photo. So let's do that. So you grab this brush here, you click that icon with a little paintbrush, right? Uh, and the drop down menu opens a brush mask, a radial, a gradient, and a luminosity. Again, this video is just about the brush mask. So you click on that once, and now this little toolbar opens up here. And you've got a masking menu, you've got this little eyeball, you've got the paint and erase, which is uh, what I talked about, painting in the exposure increase, <coughs> excuse me or erasing out the exposure increase. Um, here's what I do. Whenever I'm adding something, I will apply it, paint it in where I want it, and then use the erase brush to fix what I mess up, because I always mess things up. And that's how it works. You've got a drop down menu here, and there's some settings, size, softness, opacity, and if you're using like a Wacom tablet, you can adjust pin pressure and that sort of thing. I'm not using one and won't be talking about that in this video, but it does work with Luminar. You'll notice over here to the right, there's also size, softness, and opacity, which are the same as these settings here, size, softness, and opacity. So I'm gonna close this menu and focus on it here. So size, as you can imagine, is the size of your brush. You can just drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller. Um, on the Mac, which I use, and I don't know on Windows, it may be the same, it may not be, but there's a bracket key over here by the uh, backspace above the return. If I go left bracket key, you'll see that that is getting smaller. In other words, the brush is shrinking. And if I go to the right, the uh, brush is getting larger. In other words, it's increasing in size. That's the left bracket key to get smaller and right to get larger. You'll all also notice because I'm in paint, there's a plus on the inside of this circle. If I were to click erase, you can see there's an erase. So you have a visual cue about that. There's also a hotkey, I think it's X, yeah. If you click X, at least on the Mac, you can jump between paint and erase. So if you're doing a lot of back and forth, just hit X key and you'll just jump back and forth. Um, size, we covered that. Now softness, uh, let's talk about softness. Um, softness, if you look at the um, circle here, uh, my brush, if you will, uh, softness of zero is a really hard edge. That means there's no transition from what I'm painting in, because I'm on paint, to what I'm not painting in. In other words, it just goes, and then it falls off a cliff, is, is a, a way of thinking of it. Now, if you look at the um, brush here, you can see the circle is changing, and now the, uh, let me show you that again over here. There's, a, there's an outside line, and then there's a line just inside of that that's orange. And when your softness is at zero, right, they are the same line, hence the really hard edge. But when you start to move your softness and increase it, let's say we go to 100, you can see there's an inner circle which is orange and the outer circle which is kind of a black or, or dark gray. So what that's doing is saying inside this orange circle, you're gonna get the full effect. It's gonna be a hard, uh, you know, 100% of that uh, brushing in that you're doing. 
and between that and the outside it's going to be a gradual decrease as you get to the uh, outer circle so that's what softness is it's hard edge versus soft edge this is a soft edge because there's that zone that gradient zone between the orange and the black circles and then opacity is just um, how much of the brushing is going to show through at 100 percent opacity you're getting all of it so in one swipe it all shows through whatever you're painting on uh, if you reduce the opacity then you're going to have less of it and you'd have to go over it multiple times in order to get to full opacity so i'm going to leave that at 100 um, and i'm going to start painting because that's going to make it easier so i've got i'm going to do softness at zero and opacity at 100 and Look what I just did, a very hard edge, right? It goes white, 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 and then gray, boom, all of a sudden, a very hard stop, if you will, no transitional zone. Let me show you a softness of 100. Now I paint it, um, and look at that, right? So white in the middle, but it starts to gradually fade because I've got a lot more softness in my image. So that's how that works, it's very simple, and this is what allows you to go into your image and customize how you're painting any adjustments into your image. It comes in really handy, trust me. Now I'm gonna go back to softness of zero, and I wanna show you a little trick, at least on the Mac, and that is you can click once, and one of the challenges sometimes is how do I get a straight line, Jim? Because if you're doing this, you know I'm kinda of twitchy, maybe I drank too much caffeine, and my straight lines are, are, are like a meandering path in the woods sometimes. They're not straight at all. Um, however, there's a trick for doing that. So I can click here, and then I let go of my mouse, and I come over here, and I hold down the shift key, and then I click over here to the right, and it makes a straight line for me. So it'll do that for me. So if you're doing an edge along the side of a building, like there's a roof, and you just wanna go bing, one click, and then move your mouse over here without, uh, you know, with and let your finger go, if you will, and then click it again while you're holding the shift key, it'll draw that line for you. So super easy. So that's how that works. It's very simple and straightforward. Erase is the same thing, right? So I can come over here and just erase whatever it is that I've done. Now, if you just wanna give up and say, oh man, this sucks, I did a terrible job, forget it, I wanna clear it and start over. That's what this little menu is for, this masking menu here. You can come over here and say clear, and all that's gone. Now, I'm gonna go back to paint, and I wanna show you another thing. So I'm gonna paint on this mask, zero softness, so it's a very hard edge. And maybe I wanna look at my mask and get a visual cue because sometimes if you're just looking at your photo, it's hard to tell, well, did I mask there or not? So you, this little eyeball will tell you. You just click on that and it shows it in red. And just to give you an example, when softness is increased, you can see, you can just go like that. Also handy when you're painting just to turn it on so you can follow uh, your painting as you go and see how your mask is looking, but uh, that's up to you. Um, I generally don't do that. I'll generally paint and then turn it on like that and then say, oh crud, I messed it up, and then I'll go in and start erasing things. Notice how my eraser is different because it's only getting part of it because I've got the softness back up. So now um, I can come in here and it's gonna get all of that um, one fell swoop. In other words, there's no gradient on the, uh, um, on the brush. So I'm gonna say clear. Um, okay, I'm gonna go back to paint. Um, there's a couple other things over here. I'm gonna turn that off. Uh, you've got invert. So um, let me let me just click invert. There we go. So invert basically is it's gonna flip the mask. So I was already in paint mode, and so it had converted it to regular image, ready for me to paint in. Right? I just inverted, which means all of that exposure increase is all across the photo. So I can invert back to come back to how I want it, which is nothing on it, and hey, Jim wants to paint it in, that's why I'm on paint. So invert just flips the mask, right? Um, clear fill is, will just fill the whole thing, right? And then you could invert it, um, and that sort of thing, so now I don't need to clear it. Um, you've also got show mask, which is the same as this thing here. Um, and then you've got density and feather. So let me just paint on, do, 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 very exciting. Um, okay, density and feather. Okay, so density and feather here. Uh, density is at 100, and so density is basically the transparency of the pixels. So let me just show you by changing this. As I start to drag the density down, right, it'll start to fade into the image, and so it's a way to more naturally and cleanly kind of fade things into the image. 
Feathering is just gonna soften the edges um, kind of like softness up here. And so feathering is something you'll hear people say, they're gonna say, let me uh, turn on my mask and then I wanna get my brush and I wanna increase feathering or decrease feathering or whatever it is because they wanna adjust sort of how it's going around the edges. Again, these are, these are tools that are all about how do I blend whatever I'm masking into my image. And so that's really what it's all about. And so I think I've covered all of that. Let me just show you how I use it on an image. So I've got this photo here. I've got the adjust filter and accent AI I applied to the photo. I started like that and I'm like that now. So let's say I wanna add some structure, but I just wanna add it to the building. So I'm gonna say add filter and I'm gonna get structure. And I'm just gonna drag it to the right to make this kind of crispy and crunchy. But hey, man, goodness gracious, look what it did to the sky. You know, uh, barf. That looks terrible. I like the sky that I had. Cleaner. I don't think it was a long exposure, but cleaner, smoother, just way better, right? Um, the structure filter, great for bringing up details in buildings or whatever. Terrible on skies when you're going positive. It's great when you go negative. Um, anyway, so I'm going to get my brush mask, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say paint. And my softness is at 100, I think that's fine. I'm gonna increase the size with my right bracket key. And then I'm just gonna start painting over here into the building. Um, and now, you may wanna paint into the cobblestones as well, and that's totally fine. Um, I'm not doing it simply because I'm, this is just an example, right? So there's my mask, and guess what? It was sloppy because I'm talking to you and I'm not paying attention and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm just coming over here and just trying to do things and as you can see i didn't use my little shift trick so my edges around the buildings are kind of rough so i'm going to left bracket key and i'm going to hit erase and i'm going to come in here and clean this up a little bit and that's something i recommend uh, just paying attention to um, are the edges of your mask now um, depending on what you're doing and how big of an impact the adjustment has you may or may not notice um, any overlap or bleed if you want to call it that um, where your mask brushing may go into a part of the image where you don't want it. In other words, you may not have noticed so much of that structure um, after, uh, you know, before me brushing that. But regardless, I wanted to make it a little bit cleaner. It's still not perfect if you look at it. It's not even close to perfect, but you know what? It looks pretty fine and uh, I'm happy with it. So let's say you want to soften up the sky even more. Well, structure is a great filter for that. You could just say structure, get that again. This time we're going to the left and we're going kind of negative. Um, and then I'm just going to brush it into the sky. So once again, I'm going to click a brush if I can get it and I'm going to increase the size, make sure you're on paint and I'm just going to come over here and paint it or brush it into the sky or mask it into the sky. Um, I will say all three, those terms are interchangeable. I'm going to mask it into the sky. I'm going to paint it into the sky. I'm going to brush it into the sky. Same thing. So, here we go, there's before and after. And hey, guess what, Jim did a sloppy job. No surprise to anyone that's seen my channel. I cannot um, do two things at once. People talk about multitasking, I just think it means you're doing a half-assed job at multiple things at the same time. So when I'm masking on my own, I do a slower, more controlled job using the things uh, and the tools here as well as the tricks that I'm telling you. But um, that's how I would do it for this photo. So what did we do? We talked all about brush masking. And to be clear, I should pause. I'm doing all of these on individual filters, just like I did on in Luminar Flex with a gray piece of paper. That was all one filter on a single layer, nothing fancy. Um, that's what's called a filter mask using a brush. You can also do this on layers. And there's a difference uh, when you add layers because anything that you have on that layer, if you're using a layer mask, you're brushing it in just the same, but everything that you do on that layer is gonna be impacted. So. That's probably a future video. Just keep in mind the masking or the brushing or the painting, whatever you wanna call it, works the same. But in this case, I'm using all filters. So what did we do? We talked about the basics of a brush mask, some tips and tricks about how to use it, what all the different settings mean. We went through the exposure slider uh, on the gray sheet of paper and showed you hard edge versus soft edge, you know, opacity, uh, all those kind of things with some tips and tricks thrown in. And then I showed you a couple of examples uh, using the structure filter both positively and negatively on the same image. And this is not a full edit. This is not how I would actually edit this photo. I'd probably jack around for a while and do some color stuff because it's fun and I like to. But I wanted to cover brush masking. 
that was it. I hope it was helpful, my friends. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up down below. I'll do my best to answer and have a great day. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon and adios.